Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today, the dynamic duo of Daniel Mangana and Alex King. This is your Daily Dose of Happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And we're happy to be live and working and everything seems to be running pretty smoothly here on LOA Today. That's a good thing. The StreamYard has been challenging me lately, but I am, I'm getting this down, guys. I'm beginning to understand how this thing works. Um, nice. so I haven't figured out how to get the intro off my screen. It takes a long time to get that off. But, you know, progress is what counts here. We're not trying for perfection, just progress. Uh-huh. What is this lack of perfection? <laughs> the wrong show. The wrong show. show. Needs to be perfect. Well, then we're going to have to work on that. <laughs> crazy, crazy. And I have a good way to work on it, too, actually, because we're going to be talking about something that Alex has been wanting us to talk about for some time, and that's mindfulness. And you guys are going to be interested to find out that the Mayo Clinic and Psychology Today actually have contributions to make on the topic of mindfulness. I didn't even know they knew about it. So, <laughs> I mean, this is pretty cool. I did really, I'm impressed that they actually pay attention to it. It's on their websites for goodness sake. So I thought I'd just start with what they have to say about mindfulness and then we can kind of go with it from there. Now they treat mindfulness as a form of meditation, which I guess it really is. I think we tend to think about mindfulness being in a sort of a broader category than that. But let's start with with the meditation aspect of it, because certainly that's, you know, that's where it starts, I think, for most of us. So here's what the Mayo Clinic staff has to say about it. They say, if you've heard of or read about mindfulness meditation, also known as mindfulness, you might be curious about how to practice it. Find out how to do mindfulness exercises and how they might benefit you. And they start off by defining mindfulness as a type of med- meditation in which you focus on being intensely aware of what you're sensing and feeling in the moment without interpretation or judgment. Practicing mindfulness involves breathing methods, guided imagery, and other practices to relax the body and mind and help reduce stress. Spending too much time planning, problem solving, daydreaming, or thinking negative or random thoughts can be draining. It can also make you more likely to experience stress, anxiety, and symptoms of depression. But practicing mindfulness exercises can help you direct your attention away from this kind of thinking and engage with the world around you. Uh, and then some of the benefits they list of uh, engaging in mindfulness meditation include reduction of stress, anxiety, pain, depression, insomnia, high blood pressure. And interesting, I didn't realize that they would actually include that. And preliminary research indicates that meditation can also help people with asthma and fibromyalgia, interestingly enough. Oh, so, I need that part of the article. Well, there you go. See, we got <laughs> started on something good already which is a good thing. And then psychology today, they basically say very much the same kind of thing. They also mentioned that mindfulness is rooted in Buddhist and Hindu teachings, that Buddhism includes a journey toward enlightenment and the concept of sati, which encompasses attention, awareness, and being present is considered the first step toward enlightenment. The term was roughly translated from the ancient language Pali into the term mindfulness. And the emergence of mindfulness in Western culture can be attributed to John Kabat-Zinn. Kabat-Zinn studied mindfulness under several Buddhist teachers, such as Philip Kaplo and Thich Nhat Hanh. I probably screwed that name up really badly. <laughs> yeah, that, one caught, that name's caught me out a couple of times, so don't worry. I, I believe it, yes. <laughs> and I'm not going to say it again. So you missed it, you're done. <laughs> So that's what the uh, the medical and scientific experts have to say about mindfulness. But let's uh, let's go to our resident panel of experts and uh, see what you guys think about it. I know that for myself, like like I said at the the top of the show, mindfulness is more about an ongoing practice throughout my day, just trying to stay present. It's what uh, uh, many people call staying in the now. It's it's staying right where I am, where I'm feeling, where I'm thinking at this moment in time, and not. What happened, you know, yesterday at lunch or three weeks ago with my wife or 10 years ago with my parents or whatever else. Um, so that's where I think about mindfulness. I mean, Alex, when you think of it, what do you think of it? Uh, when I think of mindfulness, I've recently started playing this game with myself called I Manifested That. So what I do is when something, <laughs> something small, something big doesn't matter. Um, but if I notice it, I'm like, oh, I manifested that. For instance, okay. example, I lost a nail the other day. So I was like, 
well, where is this nail? <laughs> what do I, do? I already threw away the package, so I can't have another one. I'm not going to the store. And then I was, I, I was like, you know what? Let it go. And I yeah, turned over and I turned back it and it was under my thigh. And I was like, ah, I manifested that. <laughs> <laughs> so little things like that I do throughout the day. And that's, and that's how I practice mindfulness. How has it worked out to do that? It's working out great. Like, I feel like once I realize what I've manifested, then I go into, into being grateful that I can do that. And I, it just snowballs into being high vibe. Okay. And, and Daniel, when you uh, think about mindfulness, how do you handle that as part of your day? Or do you even think about mindfulness? Maybe you're just so mindful. You're not even thinking about mindfulness. I don't know. I see what you did there. Walt, when I <laughs> <laughs> my, mindfulness is a way of being for me. Mm. It's more of a, a being word than a doing word. Mm. I think, um, I'm going to get judgment, judging. I think far too many people talk about being mindful than they're actually mindful. <gasps> no, nope, totally agree. Totally agree. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, I, I think, oh, what, gratitude, you know, gratitude list, you know, gratitude. <laughs> you know, have you really delved into the darkness of what gratitude really commands of us? Mm. It's not a part-time thing, bro. Um, mm-hmm. People talk about, you know, appreciation, for example. But they only appreciate the things that they feel are worthy of appreciation, whereas appreciation is appreciating everything. Mm-hmm. People talk about meditation. They get up and back to being a butthole five minutes later. You know? <laughs> What's the point? Word. And this is, this is part and parcel of what I'm going to be speaking up to in my next book, Stop Meditating. Ooh. I'm speaking up to, it's a battle cry for people to quit being nonsensical, part-time, mindful movie dupes. And to actually buckle in and get ready for the full ride of what this calls for, which is digging in and considering that the way that we're showing up as a whole needs to change in order to meet what we call mindfulness, which is being consciously aware of what we're creating, consciously aware of what we're going out and doing in the world, consciously aware of how we're showing up, consciously aware of our relationship to the people, places and things in our life. That for me is true mindfulness. Am I there all the time? No, it's something that I continue to to work towards and to to continue to expand into. But I think it it goes a lot deeper than the uh, the buzzwords that are going around to sell nine nine seven courses on Instagram. It's <laughs> true. It's very true. I don't. I agree with you completely. I, I think if I uh, people agree. spend <laughs> if we spent less time worrying about the stuff and actually you know applying that to doing it, we'd have entirely different lives. In fact, mm-hmm. it reminds me of a. Uh, you guys know I'm an Abraham fan and, and uh, I'm on their email list. And one of the uh, most recent emails that came through was a reminder that, you know, if, if you're trying to manifest something and it's not coming through and it, you're confused about why it's not coming through, it's usually because you're not ready to receive it. You're not on the same vibrational level as the thing that you're trying to, to bring in. And that happens because you're not present with the thing you're, you're focused on. Everything else, but well, that's what the mindfulness is for. It's for getting you in that place where you can be at that vibrational level of the thing, whatever the thing is that you're trying to attract. But we spend so much time worrying about, you know, okay, I, I got to be mindful. When am I have going to be mindful? What's the best way to be mindful? Well, mm-hmm. I don't know. Have I been mindful in the last three days? And all these things that are trying to get in are saying, knock, knock, knock. Hello. We're trying to get in here. Pay attention. <laughs> I mean, isn't that the way it, it, it goes? So many people are just so wrapped up on whether or not they're, they're, they're swinging the golf club, right? They don't actually take the time to hit the golf ball. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> or they're just... so busy visualizing how beautiful it's going to be when the golf ball's in the hole that they don't actually do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I visualize you swinging the ball and creating this beautiful hole in one. My heart is singing. I'm so grateful for this experience. <laughs> Just swing the, swing the thing, man. <laughs> Hurry up. We're thing. on a court. We gotta go. <laughs> swing it. Oh, I used to hate the word mindful. Why is that? Every time I would go to a therapist or get a new therapist, they would be like, well, how mindful are you? Or what do you do for your mindfulness? And I'm like, if someone says mindful one more time, I'm going to throw 
that book that you're writing in out the window. <laughs> well, then I'm really glad that we're doing this virtually because I was I was responding to your request for this, and, and you can't throw a book at me that far. I mean, oh no, too this far was away. a while ago. This is a oh, while. Good. <laughs> This was before, this was before you, so. This is before me, okay. Yeah, this, this is yeah. BW. All yeah. right, I got that. <laughs> BW. <laughs> BW pre-Walt? Before Walt. <laughs> uh, what is this? Is it, is it, instead of Anna Domini, is it Anna Waterney? <laughs> <laughs> Question on that. When did we stop saying AD? Because I have a problem with the commercial. Because I Anna no Domini idea. is Christocentric, and now we live in a politically correct world that doesn't say things that offend people. Well, I get that, but I'm saying, like, on a timeline, like, when what year did we stop saying AD? We don't stop. It's everything after Jesus died. Yeah. So everything. it's 2021 AD, but we only say 2021. Because we kind of know it's been a couple of thousand years. We kind of know where <laughs> We got lazy. <laughs> like, yeah, we, we kind of realized we're talking about, you know, teleportation and mobile phones. It's probably not BCE. I, I think it's probably a case of, you know, where you hang out. If you hang out in church every week, you're probably hearing AD every single week. It's just that I don't hang out there, so I don't hear it. And maybe everyone's they're... so mindful that they know it. <laughs> <laughs> Dead. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, no, I love so it. I, was watching, was so this, I don't know if you've guys seen this commercial, but the um the the it shows you that your Alexa can whisper. So it's the father trying to teach his kid about about Pompeii, and he's yeah. getting asking Alexa for all the answers. So the uh the visual, well, the commercial takes him back in time to 79 A.D. to ask, "Hey, what year is this?" In the middle of Pompeii exploding. <laughs> So the guy goes, it's 79 AD. And I'm sitting here going, when did we start and or stop saying AD? <laughs> oh, see, that never happened. Stop it. Yeah, but, but like, I think it was just really to create, especially like with things like the Roman Empire that spanned yeah. BCE into AD. Well, mm -hmm. I got confused. I got really obsessed with this show on Netflix called The Roman Empire, which mm -hmm. is part documentary, part acting about. They did one on Commodus who I'm convinced they smeared him. I'm convinced that it was all mm. a political scandal where they smeared him. I don't think he was the bad guy they made him out to be. I think mm -hmm. he was disruptive of the system, by the way. Just like they when they offed Julius Caesar, because mm -hmm. he was disrupting the system. Mm -hmm. you know, that's another story for another podcast. But um, <laughs> hey, too, but, hey. but I got confused because I was like, because it doesn't do it in order. It does Commodus first, then it does Julius Caesar, then it does Tiberius. And it's like, well, which mm -hmm. one's which? They say, oh, 3,000 or 200, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's AD. Commodus was AD, Julius is BC, mm -hmm. before Christ experience. What does BCE mean? I don't know where the E came from. I only know BC. Yeah, I think it's something politically correct. Well, you're the smart <laughs> one of the gang. Uh, I have absolutely no clue whatsoever. <laughs> Somebody Google it. Gonna, Hold on, I'll Google, Google it. it. <laughs> oh, you can Google it. You're the better Googler. You're the second yeah. most smart person in the collective. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the token pink shirt wearer. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, I, I have a little problem with this ranking here because I know it's not true. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> claim it, claim it, claim it. Will. Oh, BCE stands for before the common era. Oh, it's an okay. alternative. I knew it was some politically correct nonsense. Yeah, it's uh -huh. an alternative to BC. The common, the common era, era. when hmm. Jesus may or may not have hung around. So, so was that an uncommon era? Apparently, we didn't. Have I guess. Apparently, we're in it right now. Messiahs. Yeah, we're in the common era Jesus now. Is I the guess. First Messiah to go viral. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Facts. He went viral. <laughs> well, it depends on how you define viral. I suppose. I mean, any well, of the great religious like leaders went viral. Whispers. Like the whole Chinese whispers thing. Did you know that there were actually three Jesuses in the Bible? Uh, depending on how you count them, I would say at least three. Yes. Actually, three di distinctly named and highlighted Jesuses in the Bible. Okay. I didn't know this. 
So you got to explain Jesus that a little bit more. Pop- Jesus is a very popular name. Yeshua at the time mm-hmm. was actually a very popular name. It's like Bob. So it wasn't mm-hmm. as, um, it wasn't that um, uncommon a name. So you've got Cleophas, also named Yeshua, who's listed in Acts somewhere or other. You've mm-hmm. got Simon Bar-Jesus, who was a magician, also listed. Oh, yes, I remember and then that. you've got Yeshua bin Miriam, Jesus, son of Mary. So, yeah, there hmm. are three actually listed in the Bible. Hmm. And I was just looking at it in terms of the psychology of the Jesus of the four Gospels, because it's clearly either somebody who has a severely bipolar or schizophrenic personality, or there are different versions of Jesus going on. Because, I mean, the psychology just shifts so dramatically. I mean, this is why I love the Gnostic Gospels so much, because the Gnostic Gospels were actually written by people that actually met Jesus. Mm. Whereas the young, the youngest of the four Gospels was by Luke, which was written 70 years after. Yes. So if you imagine... <laughs> 70 years after today, someone goes and says, hey, I heard you used to watch this show called LOA Today. Yes, I remember the internet. Way before the multiverse, the meta, metaverse. Yes. There was someone called Walticus. Walticus. <laughs> and a very lovely woman with pink hair, sometimes purple. I believe it was her manifestation powers. She did magic, you see. This is basically what happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. why you've got like certain of the miracles that Jesus did has got different versions. And I had this argument with my dad once, discussed with my dad once, because I think in Luke and in Matthew, there were two versions of the five loaves and two fishes. Mm, that's right. And he's yeah. like, oh, it's because he did it twice. He did it twice. <laughs> or, or somebody like got the details a bit fuzzied up, like mm. what happened, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. But we're politically correct here, so we're not talking about this at all. Let's stop, guys. We're hurting people's feelings. Not! <laughs> <laughs> Let's Yo, put it this way. <laughs> if their feelings are being hurt, they're not listening anyway. So I think we're yeah, safe. <laughs> you're the wrong show if your feelings are getting hurt. Yeah, exactly. really. Exactly. Yep. It's, it's a really true thing, though. I always thought it was I- ironic that the Gnostic uh, Gospels were the ones that were left out for the reason that you gave. Because like you say, they were the people who were actually there. But the uh, Council of Nicaea said, no, 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 that's not, that's not really inspired. The ones who were inspired were the ones who came afterward. Well, the ones that were inspired are the ones that fit the narrative. I mean, well, that's it. Yeah. That's really what I mean, it was. we like to pretty up the council. We know what the Holy Spirit descended. <laughs> discussion. AKA, this is the narrative to stop the bloodshed that was happening because people were arguing. Do you know what? People want to get mad with Constantine, but. The Roman Empire was in pieces. Everyone was kicking off. People were killing each other. Oh, yeah. All of these different sects. Is ki- it was necessary to bring order. Um, it just so happens that also was a great opportunity for him to make a, a political move to integrate certain pagan rituals in and to convert the empire so he could have peace and be remembered. So That's exactly what he did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he was probably uh-huh. the most most practical of all the uh, the Roman leaders, I would say. Yeah. Was, yeah. Smart move. Like, it was a smart move. Yeah. yeah. And like if I it said, brought Jesus peace. Went viral. Jesus went viral. Well, I mean, in their own circles, I guess, you know, Buddha certainly went viral. It's just that he did it very quietly. But people weren't killing each other. And thousands of years later, like, I kill you in the name of my viral person, Jesus. I didn't know that <laughs> killing people was a prerequisite for going viral. It makes me wonder well, do I really want to go viral? Of the virility of the- <laughs> it's a, it's a messiah. Definitely a oh, no. Well, I guess by that rule of, of thumb, then Muhammad definitely counts as somebody who went viral. That's one I'm not going to engage in any conversation. You're not going to touch that one. <laughs> You're not going to touch that one. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that one. But, like Christians, you can have a laugh with, and they'll take it. Or they'll turn the other cheek. They'll turn the um, other cheek. <laughs> You, you, you know nicer yeah. Christians than I do, I have to say. Do, um, do you not remember when someone made a simple cartoon, not even a derogatory cartoon? Oh, yeah. yeah. A depicted picture, and it all went off. This is true. Mm-hmm. This is true. Yeah. yeah. I, I publicize where I live far too often for me to engage in that conversation. Mm. I I totally I, I grasp what you were saying entirely, yes, and I am sympathetic to it. So we'll, we'll get off the, uh, the religion topic. We'll get back onto the mindfulness topic because that's really what we're talking about anyway. Exactly. Mindfulness, not vi- viral desires. Yeah. 
And, and this is a, a great example of how you become mindful. You notice that you've gone off track and you pull yourself back to your track. See what you did there, Walt? That's mindful. And for those of you listening in, we actually co-created this experience to demonstrate the mindfulness in action. <laughs> Absolutely true. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a happy life. accident at all. No. No, it was just an accident. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we call it a daily dose of happy people. Daily yeah. dose of happy. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I just had a so, Charlie horse. Hmm. Well, while you're working out the Charlie horse, I need to ask you the next question because okay. we brought this topic up because you had expressed an interest in exploring it, talking about it a bit on the show. So I wanted to make it uh, something that was aimed toward what you need and what you're looking for. Now, you've already told us that you've made a lot of progress with my hair. You know, I've so, accepted the word. Step one. Okay. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> that, that's a, you got to start at the beginning, you know, so that's good. Yep. 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 But but where are the holes for you right now? I'm, that's the part I'm curious about. What what's the part that isn't quite there yet? Being more mindful awake than I am asleep. Because when I'm asleep, I'm I'm like a half sleeper. I'm a, a very light sleeper. So mm. I'm always like, oh, does Kenny have enough blanket? Oh, does <laughs> does mom did mom go to the bathroom yet? Like I'm aware of everything that's going on except sleep. So that's why I feel like I'm more mindful asleep than I am. And for other people, I'm never mindful for myself. Well, you got to do something about that. Yeah, I know. (laughs) (laughs) But that's the point. You have to decide that, first of all, you're going to do it. And second of all, why you want to do it. Yeah. I mean, why do you, why do you, what's in it for you? Why, to, to borrow from... Yesterday's guest, we had a great guest on, a friend of Cindy Chavez's, Jackie mm-hmm. Gates. She's a, a, a former actress who has really embraced the concept of acting as if because she had an acting background and turned mm-hmm. it into an entire coaching practice. And one of the things that she was really honing in on was when you are really doing this stuff well, you are doing it in every way. So you are your own director, your own producer, you are the leading lady or the leading man of your own production. And we talked about that bit quite a bit yesterday, Mm how we tend to be understudies to our own lives at times. You know, so this is like, it's almost like a challenge thrown out to us and I'm throwing it out to you. What's it going to take for you to be the star of your own life instead of your own understudy? Oh, I am the star of my own life. You are. Okay. (laughs) So so then what's all this about, you know, being worrying about somebody else's mindfulness instead of your own? No, I'm not worrying about their mindfulness. My mindfulness is worrying about them. Okay. <laughs> You're going to have to explain I'm, that one, I'm I think. Concerned, <laughs> I'm concerned for my, 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 not my understudies, but the rest of the cast. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So you either don't trust the cast or you don't trust the director. I'm not sure which. And you're the director and you're also the casting director. So no, I'm not no. quite sure. Well, I don't know. I guess I don't trust the cast. Yeah. Okay. So you need to work on that because you're the casting director. Remember, this is your life that's being choreographed here. It'll all work out because I trust in the casting director that I've picked the right people for the right roles. Well, okay. That's, that's part way. That's improvement. Mm -hmm. That's good. You just need to kind of fill it in a little bit more, don't you? Okay. Yeah, just got to pepper it in, make it a little more, uh, mm. more not current, but uh, less sporadic. And more trusted. Because that mm-hmm. was the key word. I mean, you said you didn't really trust your, your, your cast, so to speak. In this no, metaphor. you said that. I agreed. <laughs> well, all right. That's fair. You know. <laughs> Don't put no words in my mouth. <laughs> oh, I, I'm willing, I'm willing to accept that just as long as you agree that yes, you agree to it. That's that's good yes, enough. I agree I'm, I'm that, that I agreed. <laughs> okay. So, what's it going to take? I don't know. The trust, because um, like... that's really what this is. This is about trust. This is this is trusting people to play the roles that you have assigned to them as the I casting just, director. I just have such, and I'm realizing this now. Control issues. <laughs> and I didn't realize it until right now. So I'm coping. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Well, well growth, growth is mindfully coming to an, a, a, a recognition of something to work Yeah, on. discovering Ooh. you have a problem is the first step. <laughs> mm-hmm. Admitting it, too, is also good, yeah. Yeah, that's mm. the second step. <laughs> that's the second step, right. <laughs> Listen to me when I talk. I'm in control here. <laughs> It's sort of a, a side analogy. It's also good when you don't try to attribute to somebody else what it is you agree to. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> Pretty darn sharp. Shot fired. <laughs> Pretty darn sharp. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to have to co-sign on that one. That was a good one. It's funny, though, how trust always keeps coming up, doesn't it? I mean, here's an example of it. This is one instance of it, but... It's always about trusting the process, trusting our own bel- beliefs, our own abilities. I mean, getting trusting your whole thing ourselves. with trusting ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Your whole thing with the money game is about trusting our edge, believing mm-hmm. that the edge is go- actually going to hold and maintain and grow. I mean, this stream talks about trusting our abundance. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Trusting believing that we even have it. Mm. Mm. Do you talk about trust in stepping beyond intention? Yeah, you do. Okay, but I talk about trust. I talk about the step beyond trust because trust is. I don't know if this is going to work, but I believe it probably will. So I'm going to go out versus mm-hmm. being in my knowing, which is that I've intended it, so it's so. Mm. Mm. I yeah, always say, "Why believe when you can know?" I said that the other day to my therapist. She was What's like. Your therapist she, yeah, she was asking me um, how I how I feel about having to go to Boston so often. And because it's a two hour ride and I can't mm. over a bridge. I don't, I don't do bridges, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I have to. So I said, it's yeah, the only well, way to get off the Cape. <laughs> it's the only way. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, you could take the tunnel. I was going to well, say, that's you true. The tunnel, no? yeah, that's true. <laughs> Good luck on that one. But <laughs> anyway, I was telling her, I was like, well, I'm, I guess I'm okay with it, but I'm, I'm just not going to do it anymore because I'm just, I'm just going to shut down and not have shoes that I need to go to Boston for. She's like, Oh, you're just, you're just going to do that. I'm like, yeah, that's it. I'm done. Just like I said, the sun's going to shine today. It's not going to rain and look at the sun. Not today. It wasn't today because it's raining. So <laughs> <laughs> do not blame me for today's weather. Cause I was not on my, on my stuff this morning. <laughs> you didn't tell that one. Okay. No, right, yeah. I didn't no, we'll, care we'll... for the weather this morning. So I, I was like, <laughs> But yesterday, I was like, no, I got stuff to do. I, it can't rain today. No. Rain, well, you're... rain, go away. I'd like to go out and play. <laughs> That's how the thing goes, no? It, it is. That's it. No, yeah. it goes rain, rain, go away, come again another day. Well, yeah, I, don't, I don't like that version. I like that version better. I'm trying to give an open thing to the rain. I need to come well, to Well, that was for the negative people who wrote it in the past. We're, we're more of Negative Nancys. Yeah, exactly. Well, it also depends on I'm your perspective. Nancy. I should, probably shouldn't use that one. She's a lovely human. It depends on your perspective because, I mean, I'm in the gardening business. We want the rain. Mm. Mm-hmm. Gardens don't grow without it. That's true. Weeds don't grow without it, too, which is how we actually get hired. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so rain's and, actually a good thing. And we need leaves because trees, because air. Mm. Yes. Things. Yeah. All begetted yeah. by rain. So like I said, Rain's I'll allow it thing. to rain every once in a while, just not on my parade. <laughs> Your parade. I like I it. See yeah. what you did there. Thank you. That's Thank beautiful. You. Yeah. Very well done. <laughs> you did that quite mindfully, I must say. Oh, thank you, darling. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think these these Thursday shows are a perfect example of seeing this by osmosis. Because yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Walt when I first came, which is me and Walt, and then mm-hmm. it kind of merged into this me, Walt, and Alex thing, where he's just mm-hmm. like, "I am the king of wit." We <laughs> 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 rubbed up on Walt for a, 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 a long time. <laughs> Okay, well, the grass is greener where the laughs are more plentiful. Mm-hmm. Okay. He used to For be me. a lot more serious. Why is it so serious? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, do you know where that's from? I do not, but I love the movie. Oh, uh, I do. It's I a great movie. You haven't it's even what? seen the movie? 
I haven't seen the movie. I'm not a, I'm not a DC fan. No, but it's not about the DC-ness. It's about the power of the acting and the storytelling. Yeah, I'll get around to it, but... The Nolan brothers yeah. know how to make a good story, I, I find. That's true. That's true. Until they got to um, Inception and got a little bit off whack and then mm-hmm. got to Tenet, and it's like what the fudging fudgery did I haven't seen even Tenet. talking about. That just, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, and I love... David Washington, Dubry, Watts, I like him as a human. He seems really cool. I loved him in Ballers. But I have no idea what that movie was talking about. It's like, <laughs> let's talk about these grand ideas yeah. and bring them into the mainstream in a way that makes no sense. <laughs> I feel like they're trying to like bring our advanced concepts, mm-hmm. but forgot that you used to make good movies that made sense. Even the real <laughs> movies made sense. Uh, like, that's uh, important. Inception, had gaps, gaping holes, but overall, the movie made enough sense. It was grounded enough in reality to make sense. Yeah, now they're just going and off the They're like, we're just going to have these characters from the future. We're not going to say why they want to destroy everything at all. And we're going to have inverted people, but somehow the cars are going to invert as well, even though they're not the people. But, you know, <laughs> who cares? Just look at the pretty colors and the serious people making serious faces. Yeah, distract him with the CGI. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I enjoyed myself, but you're a bloody idiot, mate. Like, make some sense, will ya? Follow up question. Idea. Did you see Mortal Kombat? The movie is out now. <gasps> it's been out since Friday. Where have you been? I've been looking after two small humans and <laughs> running a seven figure business. So Fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I, when I saw the adverts about it, I was like, really? Yeah, Jurassic I didn't know how to feel about bit, it. Yeah, Chris Lambert, like, Raiden mm. with a Belgian accent didn't really work for me. That was a little bit cultural appropriation in the most racist form. However, <laughs> then they had, like, another white guy that definitely wasn't a Japanese god. But, hey, we're going to leave that for another time. <laughs> um, but you're saying that this new one is... It's watchable. Is it available to stream immediately on on Netflix? HBO Max? I might have to buy HBO Max because I think they're going to have plenty of things. HBO Max is is the way to go because you get all the movies the day they come out. I like this. Mm-hmm. I'm looking I, I, forward to them redoing Justice League because they didn't do justice to. I still League haven't League. finished the Snyder version, but I already. I, I think I got like a ha- maybe an hour through, and it's. It's already better. We'll see. Let's return to subjects that sense. Walt may actually confer with because movies are certainly not his wheelhouse or his. I, I was just going to comment sense. that I really love the fact that you you uh, you know played up and made fun of me for you know coming up with funny things to say and then you went off on this five minute rant of just absolute comedy. So thank you very much for that. That was great. <laughs> you inspired me, Walt. You inspired me. <laughs> well, that's my role, I guess. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. Oh, right. You can get the other people. Inspire, inspire. Comedy, humor, yeah. and mindfulness. And mindfulness. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, hey, is there a better way to get into that high vibe state? Because that's where you do the best mindfulness stuff anyway. Right? And the best manifestation, which for me is what mindfulness is all about. That's Being true. in a place to be conscious of what I've manifested. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's been that's putting me in a high vibe lately? What's that? Really? Yeah. What's that? I'm so Well, my feed is. I have I have a very specific feed, but my feed is hilarious. Like it's just <laughs> <laughs> husband and wife pranks, um, dogs that can talk, and <laughs> all kinds of great stuff. Oh, my favorite is teenagers telling their parents inappropriate jokes. Cracks me up every time. And then I get the joke, and then I get to go tell my mom and, and do something. <laughs> That's the part you're looking forward to. The part where you go tell your mom, right? Yeah. Well, my mom and Kenny, and he's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I found this one TikTok of this uh, female police officer who keeps hitting on her her gay partner, and she she just she records it just for just for her laugh. So whatever she says, I put it on pause, and then I go tell Kenny, and he's like, what? <laughs> You know, stupid ones like, um, damn, how does it go? Something.
something like, did you find the love of your life or do I have to walk by again? Stuff, stuff like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. But way funnier. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, TikTok, I'm just saying. It sounds like that's one of your best tools for mindfulness, to be perfectly honest. Well, yeah. Because it, break, it brings you to the high vibe state fast. Yeah, I had to get off the uh, the Netflix um, comedy specials because they're not special anymore. <laughs> and they're not funny. They're, they're not, not funny. funny. That's they're the not. It's like, yeah. can you stop paying people money to embarrass themselves with this suit? I don't even money? think they're getting paid. I think they're paying Netflix. Like, everyone has a special. Who has, who has a special now? Everybody and their mom. People I don't even know. I don't even recognize half these names. When they <laughs> I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> People just go there to be not funny now. I remember yeah. like Trevor Noah. I, I saw Trevor Noah live yep. in London in 2000 and seven years ago. Cause it's for my 30th birthday. He went hilarious. Loved him. Then he did the today show and turned into a politician. Mm. Mm. <laughs> then he did a stand up, and I was like, but dude, you used to be funny. Like, mm-hmm. I used to laugh hysterically at every single thing you do. Now I don't even want to remember that you're from my part of the world. Oh, damn. It's funny that you mentioned that, too, because my introduction to him was by somebody saying, well, it, he's doing all this great stuff about politics. And I watched five minutes and, and I thought, not quite the way you were just describing it, but mm-hmm. I thought, this is a guy who could be really funny. Why is he spending time on this? He just bashes Donald Trump. And now Donald Trump's not in office. Don't now he's really not funny. Anymore. I mean, you, you'd think he'd give up at this point, right? Because right. he's not there he's anymore. Not anymore, bro. Because your entire career was made on dumping on Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And after a while, it just becomes so not funny. I mean, it gets, it gets just tiring. So it's just abuse. It's just yeah. abuse after a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It it is. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, you're using your platform positively. But but I'm glad to hear that you know what you said that he was really funny pre politics. If you look at look at anything Trevor Noah pre moving to America, okay. Mm-hmm. Look at his stuff on YouTube. You'll be in his. You may find it to be quite humorous. <laughs> <laughs> nicely done. Very nicely done. I like that. I was mindful of my wording there. Beautifully. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I literally like he does great accents. He does really mm-hmm. witty, very clever observations. He self deprecates in an empowering way. It's hilarious. Even the mm-hmm. way like he does his heritage, it's great. And then yeah. he got on the, was it the late show, the today show, the rubbish show? No, it's the... okay. and I, all three of those the same thing. It's the daily show. And I'm just like, <laughs> really? Oh well. I mean, I don't like watching anything that has to do with politics, so I don't watch him. But I do catch his commercials every once in a while when he's advertising for a show, and I'm like, "Well, you're trying," and I'm like, "Oh, but there it goes. There's the yeah." Right there. Mm. Really? But, it's well, I'll shame. definitely I, look I, him up. I, I'm upset about that. It's not even him anymore. It's his writers. <laughs> well, you can tell it's also him too. That that's him off on a rail, is what that is. Yeah. Yeah, he's just kind he of just like, used to be so funny. Like, it really brings me sadness. Mm. Well, the happiness is that the old stuff's recorded, right? So we can still yes. reference all that old stuff. So that's yeah, the good part. Interwebs forever. He, does this, he did this thing of unison. Like, there's a thing on YouTube where um, Trevor Noah, the spoof unison advert, mm. where he talks about sponsoring uh, uh, an, a middle-class American family. <laughs> Your dollars, your dollars can help little Timmy get the latest Game Boy or something like that. <laughs> it's hilarious. And the way he does it with a straight face. Yeah. Like, that cracks so, me up. Please, straight face. give some money today. Like, <laughs> that's, some, that's some good stuff. That sounds cool. I like that. Okay, yeah. I'm going to look this guy up now. Because yeah, I didn't just have a reason to watch pre, him before. But... Pre-Daily Show. Just find yeah. out the date that he did the Daily Show and pretend just go that before that. like... Yeah. Pretend that he ascended into the ethers and transmuted into eternal light after that. Okay. <laughs> Before then, enjoy him. Okay. 
I, I think I'll just go look for whatever the old stuff is. I won't bother to look up okay. what the date is. You know, if it's old, so, yeah, that's probably good. Noah BCE. <laughs> for the comedy era. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. I like that. That was a good yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Or> comedy era. <laughs> it's true, it is true. And then I'm going to get invited to the Daily Show when my career gets a certain point. I'd be like, "So, Trev, South Africa all the way." Um, you know, I was trying to get rings, right? <laughs> <laughs> One love. <laughs> like he does. He's got this whole skit where basically. Um, so in South Africa, because he's mixed race, he's, he's like biracial, they used to call him like the white kid, basically. And he, he'd get mocked for being like, he's, he was called like the white kid. That's what they call him in, in oh my God. And like, he heard these stories about if he goes to America, he's going to be black. And the only thing he wanted to do was to be black. Like, yeah, I'm going to get to be black. I'm going to go to be black in America. And he goes there and everyone thinks he's um, Puerto Rican. <laughs> He goes to the airport, people start speaking to him in Spanish. Oh, <laughs> like, like, my dream to be in black like... were ended. It was, this is the kind of thing that he does. Like he has this great build up. Mm-hmm. And he's got this other one where he was at a food truck and, um, he talks about the difference in languages. Like he, he covers with really complex ideas. Like he talks about like a nap, a napkin, but for mm-hmm. him, napkin has another meaning. And so the guy's talking to him about using a napkin because he's going to get food on his face. And he's thinking napkin like a diaper because the food's going to go straight through him. And oh, they're having wow. this whole dialogue with two completely different ideas. <laughs> and he's like, well, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, you don't want it running. You don't want it be going everywhere. He's like, you want to make sure you use a napkin. He's like, I don't want this. I don't want this food anymore. I don't want this food. He's like, yeah, you know, it can really spill everywhere. You want to make sure you get the, have your napkin ready. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that he does. Yeah did and now he's like donald trump is an orange man ha ha ha, ha. Yeah. isn't that funny one but of you know my what, favorite we... things from him was um when he was talking about his his mother uh getting his dog back from the neighbors did you see I that, one? Seen that one no, oh I, that one. I think that's part of his newer stuff did did you see the one about when he was talking about being born a crime so basically he was born during an apartheid era his dad was swiss a white guy from switzerland that came in in, had intercourse and conceived with a black woman, which was against the law. Mm-hmm. So his dad, he's like, my dad would have to like wave at me from across the street because we couldn't yes, see walking together. That. Because it's like, father, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he does these really cool. But anyway, yeah. Well, you know what's happening though? By us focusing on the early part of his career, we are energetically sending out signals to him that will encourage him. To return to that era, to keep doing more of that. I'd like to send him an email. I I don't want to leave it to chance and vibration. I'd like to send him an email. (laughs) Maybe a petition of everyone that's like, stop it. I'd love to do that. Well, why don't you? Or you could just hashtag Trevor Noah this episode. Ain't nobody got time for that. (laughs) (laughs) I've got a kid and responsibilities. You want to write a whole email. You've got time for that, but you can't write a hashtag. It was figurative. Figurative, (laughs) Alex. Play along. Be mindful of my comedic shortfalls and play along. No. (laughs) Good Lord. Today is a no leeway with Alex Day. Everyone (laughs) (laughs) can. So, so this is the, the new way that Alex attempts to stay mindful by basically just holding everybody else to the line. Is that it? For today. <laughs> For today. The, the mindfulness police. <laughs> the mindfulness police. Not yeah, me. there you go. <laughs> no, not me. Not me. No. Oh. I'm in mindfulness jail more, more than anything. <laughs> the mindfulness What'd you get nabbed for? What I, what am I in for? Yeah, what'd you get nabbed for? I wasn't being mindful, so I don't know. What <laughs> for not being mindful, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in the moment, so I don't realize what I'm in for. <laughs> so you weren't in the moment, so because of that, there was nothing to remember, so you couldn't remember what it was that you were nabbed for. <laughs> <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> okay. 
So I have no idea how we'll get back to not mindfulness, but I'll, I'll give it a, an attempt here by simply diverting attention for a moment and reminding people we want people to be subscribers of the podcast and we want people to be downloading the Yellow Way Today app and sharing because we want to grow the audience and get more and more people paying attention and listening to Daniel ragging on Walt for trying to be funny in, in a group of yeah. people on a podcast. You were doing you know? it. You were doing it, Walt. Believe in yourself. <laughs> I was just owning it, I believe. No, you were no, I you were you were doubting it. <laughs> I was? Yeah. Okay. I, th- I thought I was affirming it, but all right. <laughs> well, are you as, long, as long as you think you're affirming it, then it's affirmed. I, I was saying that's what was happening. That's why people should tune in and listen. I mean, that's very right. straightforward, I think. All right. <laughs> But anyway, that's just a long-winded way of saying subscribe and share. Make sure other people get the, the word as well as you're getting the word. And binge listen to Alex and Daniel and, and me just, you know, going crazy on Thursdays because mm-hmm. it's good for you. And it helps raise your vibration and it helps make you mindful. Oh, and by the way, you can watch us too. I mean, most people do listen to the podcast, but you can't watch us. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. And in fact, if you want to find us on Face on YouTube, rather, Alex, how do they find us on YouTube? You go to YouTube, search LOA Today podcast videos. And once you see our smiling faces, click down below to the red subscribe button next to the red subscribe button. Oh, I did the right. Okay. Next to the red <laughs> There is a little silver bell. Make sure you click that bell so you will always be notified when we are live. And, and the only way you would know that is if you were subscribed to YouTube so you could see what it was she was referencing in the last bit of that promo. Gotta see it, yo. Exactly. Y'all gotta see it. That's it. Unless you gotta tune in to see what, what color my hair is every week. Yeah, y'all, gotta, that is y'all true. gotta keep up with that. Y'all mm. gotta be y'all gotta be on. Y'all, y'all gotta be on. <gasps> Never mind. You cannot do that. So, oh, no, that's not fair. <laughs> I was going to say you should also tune in to see what color my hair is every week and also to vote on which hair I should use for my wedding. Ooh. Come and vote for the wedding hair. <laughs> which is coming up in October, so you only have like six months to vote. So. We didn't ask Kenneth, but we don't care. <laughs> no, he doesn't care about anything. He's like, I'm just going to show up. Can I have a black tux? That's all I want. <laughs> nice. I'm not going to say anything bad about Kenny. He dropped by Dan before the show and said hello because he wanted to make sure he said hello and that he was telling everybody about the show. So I'm not going to say a thing about Kenny. I mean, he was he's a good guy as far as I'm concerned. I've never got to meet Kenneth, but I just like his vibe. He seems like a wonderfully spirited human who I'd like to shake. He's a good vibe. Him. I'm going to get him as he a is. guest on the show one day once he, once he feels more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kenny, we'd love to have you on the show. We've got a lot yeah. of insights. Like, we could have an episode just talking about conspiracy theories, and oh my god, it'd be like four hours long. <laughs> Are we going like, to well, get shadow banned? Though, are we going to get shadow banned? I don't want to get shadow banned. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Because His conspiracy theories are more like the book of the Anunnaki and all that stuff. Oh, Anunnaki, I can get down with that. Yeah, exactly. Facebook doesn't know what that means. The Facebook no. is right. <laughs> Anunnaki, is that a strain of COVID? <laughs> like what's going on? I got my vaccine. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, friends of mine are moving to Mexico, by the way, because oh. um, they don't want to stay in Europe because they think there's going to be a vaccine passport and they're scared. Really? A vaccine passport? Yeah, but you're not yes. going to be able to move around Europe without a vaccine. That's, that's the latest conspiracy theory. Yeah. Mm. In America, they're just like, get your shot, take off your mask. <laughs> no, it. no, there, there's, there's conspiracy theories about passports within America, too. Well, we have the stupid cards that we have to carry with us now that says we got our shot. Well, you don't have to carry it. That's, that's the what beginning. they tell you when you go get your shot. That's the beginning. Yep. And I just kind of want to see what you got, what happens if you guys. I'm not an anti vaxxer. I'm just an anti-experimental vaxxer. Mm-hmm. Well, I I took it because my lung issue. I don't want to. Yeah, you need it. You yeah, need it. exactly. My doctors advised me to take it, so I did. Other yeah, than I that, I was like planning on waiting a couple of years to wait and see y'all grow horns and tails, and then 
when they yeah. get the real one out, that's the one I'll take. I need to see what's going on with that. There's, do you know what it is? I don't. The whole smoke and fire thing. I'm not going to mention any companies to get sued, but mm. the whole smoke and fire thing. Too many people have been sued for like faking stuff, and some stuff may or may not be happening to people that use different things. I'm like, I'm just going to chill for a minute. Right. And see what <laughs> I, I'm with you on that, actually. In fact, the uh, the approach that I'm taking is I firmly now believe that all illness and all wellness originates in the human mind. So I'm just mm-hmm. originating wellness. Wellness, yeah. Well, there's that too. I'm originating <laughs> wellness. <laughs> I'm originating wellness in my mind. You know, yeah. and, and that that to me is the beginning and the end of it. I mean, the day may come where, you know, there are certain social pressures or whatever. So I feel like I have to do it. OK, I may go along with that. But even if I do, I'm going to go along with it, not because I feel like I need the vaccine, but because I'm just not worried one way or the other about it. I'm I'm OK, you know, because I'm maintaining my wellness mindset. I, I really I'm believe I'm rich enough time. to have my own island so that all you sick people can be sick and I'm just going to be healthy eating. Agreed. Pineapples. That's like my thing. I, I don't even need the island, to be honest, because I I really do appreciate that I can be well in a sea of sick people. Not that no, I that really wasn't, prefer that. That wasn't even fear. It was, it, was, it was just a lack of interest in the social pressure to conform. To uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I just want my own island because right now it's too people out there. So. It's too people. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be. Summer is coming. Summer is coming. <laughs> <laughs> there are here causing traffic. We almost got they a car. They found the bridge. They found the bridge. <laughs> oh, the towel. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Poor Alex. I mean, she she loves living on the Cape, except during season. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those things. Yeah. yeah. One day great. I'll to come to the Cape. That was the best summer ever. Beaches were quiet. Oh. <laughs> Check one of those people who's actually a fan of COVID. I mean, oof. Wow. I well, not the disease, but you know, the pandemic is great. The, pandemic. Great. the peace and quiet. The peace, peace and, and quiet. quiet. The stay home and be together with your family. The mm. let's all work from home. The Zoom calls. The pandemic unemployment. I'm having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Stimulus checks paid my wedding off, so. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. And that's how I'm being high vibe about the pandemic. I'm sure President Biden is very proud, so there you go. Are He's you cool sure? with my book, though. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we got to finish off a little bit on the mindset, on the, on the mindfulness um, concept before we close off for the day. So I, I just want to somehow do what we do during a meditation sequence and realize that our minds have gone off on this tangent, or sometimes it's a tangent, and say, okay, we're going to gently bring ourselves back to the present moment. And everything just gets calm for a moment until that next craziness comes in. But for that moment, for that one moment in time, we are mindful once again. I just realized, remember a couple of weeks ago, we were trying to figure out what to call Thursdays? Ah, you have one. I do, but I just lost it. <laughs> that's the problem we always have. Oh, oh, I got it. Tangent Thursday. Oh, that's not bad. Hmm. I wish it had an H in there somewhere so it could, you know, flow a little better, but it doesn't. Put, put one in there. Put it tangent Thursday. Tangent. Tangent Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. All right. Invent a word. I like that. Create our reality, so we can create new words as well. I think so. Yeah. Tangent Thursdays. That's going in as a hashtag permanently. All right. I like that. Yeah. Good. So welcome to Tangent Thursday. (laughs) Thank you. That's gonna redo the intro. Well, it will. I mean, (laughs) eventually. We 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 already did today's intro, so I have to kind of you know move on. But no, I mean (laughs) Thursday. Oh, well. <laughs> hey, I promised I was going to redo the intro anyway because you guys didn't like the videos I picked, so I'll, you know, I have to do it anyway. I'm okay with oh, video. yeah, I got to send my pick. You like the video? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is 
and laughing. That's great. <laughs> but that's my personality. So what are you going to do? Well, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's why I picked it, to be honest, it, because it showed who you really are. You're, you're yeah. this, you know, open, happy person. So. True. That's, All right. That's <laughs> what I want people to see. That's like who you really are. Time. Well, yeah, but that's kind of hard to show in a video. Yeah. Yeah. So, just saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, this is the best thing about Tangent Service. Fan, no, I can't even say oh, it. Tangent oh, oh, Thursdays. Yeah. <clears throat> is that it's a great opportunity to laugh. Yes. It's it's the best opportunity to laugh all week long. Mm-hmm. And that's what I look forward to. So even when I lose the thread of the conversation completely and can't remember how to get back to it, I know at least my vibration is staying up because I'm laughing my ass off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's the whole thing. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so I got to ask you, Alex, did we fill in the gaps? Did I think we help? It's a little more work on uh, more on. Okay, if you're in my situation where you're not as mindful, how what exercises can you do to work on that? Mm. What okay, do you bring to the table. I mean, what do you do already? I mean, clearly you laugh. We know that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Kenny helps with that a lot. He's he's always got me laughing, so I'm always present in the mm. moment, and listening. So that's when he good. Comes around, I'm all in my head. So then the question becomes, what? can you do yeah. to get yourself into that laughing place? Well, that's easy. That's it. turn on the TV or turn on my phone. One or the other. TikTok. TikTok. Yep. All right. So TikTok. now you have to go to any, any time that you find your mind like swirling out of control. Now you know what to do, right? It's really just about it more than anything else. It's about noticing. Yeah, I think I think that's the biggest issue right there, just failing to notice and, and do anything about it. But once you've noticed, mm-hmm. once you've realized that you're doing it, you can stop the world for a moment and say, "Hey, wait a minute, I'm off track here. Got to do something about this. Pull out a yeah. TikTok, you know, do what it takes to get yourself into that place." And that's really what mindfulness is all about. One of the things that uh, I commented on somebody's uh, post about this today, uh, mm-hmm. people get very confused about uh, meditation in general. This is a form of meditation, but they confuse about meditation in general because they think that they're failing because their minds keep wandering and they fail to understand that's the whole point of meditation to keep you pulling your mind back from the wandering. Yeah. That's what you're trying to accomplish because that's how you end up. You know, it, it isn't like I'm just going to calm my mind down. No, you, you actually do it through this process of noticing that you wandered and pulling yourself back, noticing that you wandered, pulling yourself back. So that's really, that that's what fills in your gap, I think, Alex. Mm-hmm. Just noticing and pulling it back every time. Meditation is also a word I have a problem with. Well, I had that problem for a long time. I still do to an extent, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it but even describes it well. You just listened. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, 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 I mean, we don't have time to get into it because there's only about a minute left. But, uh, yeah, the, the, even the word meditation, I don't like it because I don't think the word itself accurately describes the process. Agreed. But, yeah. But that that's a topic for maybe next Thursday if we're mindful okay. enough to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mindful enough to write it down? Well, there's that too, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Daniel, do you, do you have anything coming up that people know need to know about? Anything in the Dream with Dan group? Just... Um, May 17th, but we'll have a, a link ready by the show next week. Um, cool. I've finished designing the four days now, and it's going to go miles beyond anything that we've done before. All the stuff Ooh. that we've been doing previously that's been, yeah, put it this way, the money game, I'm doing on day one. That's the foundation. The money game challenge, wow. all that stuff is day one. That's day one. How many days? Four. Four days. Oh, this is going to be intensive. That's jam-packed. Uh, I'm doing 30 minutes a day, four days. We're doing money DNA. We're doing advanced flow funnel. I'm doing live visualizations, live intervention coaching. We're giving away gifts and fun, good stuff. I'm ordering a load of merch to give away. Nice. Yeah, including really nice. Jimmy Your Eyes Opens water bottles, uh-huh. all sorts of different stuff, some T-shirts. You have hat. All right. Hat. I've got a hat. I've got to stop meditating. Snapback. I need a snapback. I've got you, boo. 
Thank so you. there you have it. That's something to look forward to. We're, we're going to be dishing out that link next week. So thank you very much for that, Daniel. Thank you, Alex, for bringing up a good topic. Thank you, everybody, for, for chiming in. Thank you especially to our podcast listeners. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.